On December 7th, 1941, the Japs bombed Pearl Harbor and later Manila and other towns in the Philippines. All of you know the story. No, we lost the first round and lost it badly. But why we lost it and why we can still lose the last round is something which maybe you don't know. Well, Staff Sergeant Douglas E. Brown does. He was there. And here's his story. I don't know exactly where to start it. It could begin in the millions of American homes, where they had the idea that Japan didn't amount to very much. And in case of war, we could polish her off almost any dull afternoon. In any way, there wasn't going to be a war. It could begin in hundreds of American factories where the chief concern of both management and labor was to make blame sure that the other side didn't chisel an extra margin out of the defense work. But I can tell you where it didn't begin. It didn't begin with the Army. We knew that Japan would be no pushover. We knew that sooner or later we'd have to tangle with it. We also knew we didn't have enough equipment to win. On this particular morning... I was in the Sternberg General Hospital in Manila with a busted arm. A gang of us was sitting around uh, talking things over. Yeah. And look at those two phony envoys the Japs have sent to Washington to pour on the old oil that all Japan wants is peace. Sure, that plan is for saps. Oh, the public will get wise to it sooner or later. And we're not at war yet anyway. Now, when it does come, I'm not worrying about whether the Army has the guts to see it through. Neither am I. I'm worrying about whether the guys in American factories have the guts to see it through. Because that's where the war is going to be won or lost. And don't kid yourself in a day. Yeah. You can't stop a tank with bare hands no matter how much gut you have. You got to fight tanks with tanks. And planes with planes and ships with ships. And we ain't getting them. That gives me a pain in the neck is all this crossing that's going on. The bosses ain't going to do this. Labor ain't going to do that. And what about our days off? Good grief. After they've seen what happened in France, they can still sit around and squabble. Boy, oh boy, what a laugh Tokyo must get out of that. Yeah, why, some of those guys couldn't be helping the Japs any better if they signed up for a hitch in Hirohito's army. Yeah, in the Jap army, they might get bumped off after a while. But in an American defense plan, they can go right on being useful to Japan till the war's over. Oh, oh not that they aim to help Japan, but... Th- That's just what I'm saying, Sarge. Japan's planning for suckers. They just ain't smart, that's all. Well, I was reading in the paper only the other day about... Hey, listen. Wait a minute. It's an air raid alarm. It must be some kind of a mistake. Hey, listen. That ain't no mistake. That's a bomb. You're wrong, Sarge. We are at war. And then the news reports. The town of Bagua bombed. The town of Eba, Camp John Hay, Clark Field. And after that, the wounded arriving at the hospital receiving station, where, in spite of his broken arm, Sergeant Brown was helping. Long lines of stretchers seemingly without end, doctors working frantically. Now, the anti tetanus. All right, move this stretcher along. Ask them to dress his wounds as quickly as they can. Say, doctor, I've been looking for a buddy of mine, Porky Fetty. He was stationed at Eber. Well, there were some men brought in from Eber around 11 o'clock. You might inquire. Yes, all right. Bring that man up. They're coming. They're coming again. Uh, here. They're here. Give me a hand, again. Sergeant. Uh, mm. Roll up his sleeve and swab his arm with alcohol. No. Yes, sir. Mm. Alcohol's about gone, sir. Yes. Well, uh, run over to pharmaceutical supplies and get another bottle. Yes, sir. Hey, Brown, where you going? To get some alcohol for the doc. You found out anything yet about Porky? No, nah, no. Nah. Some of the men came in from Eva about an hour ago, but I haven't had a chance to locate them. Uh, I talked to some guys from Camp John Hay. They didn't have a prayer after the first raid. The Japs came right down and machine gunned them. Nothing to fight back with. Yeah, yeah, that's the story you hear all over. That's yeah, like I said this morning. You can't fight a tank or a plane with bare hands. Not enough anti-aircraft guns, not enough ammunition, not even enough medical supplies. Say, how the hell do the people back home think we're going to stop the Japs anyway? They call them dirty names? Yeah, don't let it throw you. Stuff will be coming through before long. Sure, sure, after they get through holding meetings back there. Making speeches about wages and hours. 
Meantime, if a few of us get our insides blown out, well, what's the difference? Well, the folks back home aren't going to let us down. Look, I got a scram. Hey, wait a second. Tomorrow morning, I'm going to ask the commanding officer to t- return me to duty. Return you to duty? Why, you're nuts. Well, you've only been out of bed two or three days. Well, if I'm going to be a target for some jab bomber, I don't want to be in a hospital ward. I want to be out there where I got a little chance to fight back, anyhow. Yeah, when you do put in for return to duty, have to be sent to Nichols Field. That's what I put in for. Huh? Oh, you did, huh? Mm-hmm. Say, who's nuts now? Well, that's different. You've been sick. But there's nothing the matter with me except a busted arm. Besides, you'd be safe enough here anyway. Yeah. They wouldn't bomb a hospital. Even the Japs have got enough conscience not to... Uh-oh. Wouldn't bomb a hospital. You know, Sarge, I've never seen a guy who was wrong as often as you were. A few days later, at Nichols Field. Okay, remember this is strictly reconnaissance. Keep out of trouble if you can, but if you can't, let them have it. And good luck! Sergeant Brown reporting for duty, sir. Huh? Where are you from, Sergeant? Just discharged from Sternberg General Hospital, sir. My papers will be along later. Yeah, say, what's the matter with your arm? It was broken, sir. But it's okay now, practically. Well, there's plenty to do around here, even for a man with a broken arm. Report to the first sergeant. You'll find him over at the hangar. Yes, sir. Hey, Brown. Hey! Hey! Where did you get here? Yesterday, what held you up? Oh, I had to spend all night in the ravine over there. Quite a gang of us. Yeah? Any excitement? Ah, no, nothing important. Some patrol action. We would have given them a good shellacking, only we had to go a little easy on the ammunition. Yeah, only. I wonder whether that's what they'll be saying a year or two from now. We would have won the war only. You're looking for the top sergeant? Yeah. Oh, he's over there, but... Hey, look up there. Jeff Zero. Jeff Bomber. Must be hundreds of them. Come on, we better find cover. Wait. Look, there are six of them. Jumping on one of ours. Lordy, he hasn't got a chance. One against six. There he goes. He's been hit. No, no, that's a Jeff plane. All right, that's a ticket. Give it to him, brother. Give it to him. He's losing a lot of altitude, though. There goes another Jeff. No. Sure, sure. Look at the smoke pouring out of him. One against four now. If we only had more planes, if we only had more planes, Lord Sanders' planes, hundreds of thousand ships over the world. Oh, we aren't doing so bad. Oh, boy, they're not. Oh, boy. Yeah. Yeah, they got him. They got him. Damn them. Damn them. Why can't they go against them even? Why can't they just have an even break? That's all we ask, an even break. Come on, they're heading this way. We can't do any good. I don't stay right here. What do you mean? You can't stay here. I'm going to stop them. You're crazy. Come on, you can't stop a plane with a rifle. That's all I got to stop them with. Okay, that's what I'll use. We've got to fight this war with nothing but more bear fists. All right, let's do it. Corporal, let me alone. Come on, you yellow. Look out, duck. For the liver. Two rules. Sergeant Brown was hurled by an explosion into a shell hole. His arm again seriously injured. A few days later, in the hospital at the 31st Infantry Barracks, the medical officer in charge addressed the soldiers in the convalescent ward. Now, according to peacetime standards, none of you would be considered able to return to duty. Many of you bear wounds which have not entirely healed. Many of you are still suffering from shock and exhaustion. Many of you, to one degree or another, are crippled. But this is not peacetime. We are at war. Standards and practices of peacetime have to be set aside. All of you are able to serve someone, and in some respect. We are not ordering you to do so. We're asking for volunteers. We can't promise you continued medical attention, nor that you will be adequately fed and cared for, nor that you will soon be reinforced or relieved. We can only promise you the privilege of 
serve and fight and perhaps dying for the principles in which all of us believe. As you call the roll, you may answer yes or no. Private Anderson. Yes. Private Adams. Yes. Corporal Blumenthal. Yes. Private Benowitz. Yes. Sir. Sergeant Brown. Yes. Private Clancy. Yes. Sir. Private Dietrich. Yes. Private Eichelberg. Yes. Sergeant Franklin. Yes. First Sergeant Gerhardt. Yes. Private Innes. Yes. I bring to the microphone now Staff Sergeant Douglas E. Brown. Yes, in the Philippines, I saw American kids who might have been your sons or your brothers get out of hospital beds, their bandages still red with blood, climb into their uniforms and go back to stop the Japs. And I saw other kids, with one arm blown off, plead with tears in their eyes to be allowed to go back. You don't have to worry about the American soldiers, sailors, and merchant seamen. There's no question about their courage. The only thing America has to wonder about is whether the people on the home front have the courage to give what it takes to win. You ought to know by now that our boys can't stop the Japs with their bare fists. And they can't stop tanks with rifles. Those kids fighting around the world for you don't even ask you to give them an even break. They just ask for a chance to win. So, get in there and pitch. They need rifles. They need tanks. They need planes. They need food. And one thing they needed above all on Baton was medicine. There's got to be more ships to carry these supplies in. There's got to be more naval ships to get them there safely. So America's got a job to do. And every one of you listening to me is America. Every one of you has a job to do. If you do that job as you can do it, we win. If you're a slacker on that job, we lose and don't let anybody tell you anything else. So, what's your answer, Mr. and Mrs. America? I shall call the roll. You may answer yes or no. I did my best. 